Dear President, Commissioner, dear friends of Kosovo, let me, dear colleagues, thank you all who contributed so actively to this report. This year's Kosovo reports comes in a special moment, the one when we see again the horrors of war in Europe. As Kosovo has also recently experienced the war, its government demonstrates full solidarity with Ukraine, for which I want to thank them. This year's report only scratches the surface of challenges and issues that are ahead for the Kosovo government. Yet, it, is all, it also clearly underlines the long path Kosovo has made in the reforms and its Euro integration. Kosovo keeps proving its democratic capacities by organizing free, fair and transparent elections. It is indeed a great example for all Western Balkan states how to promote and nurture democratic standards, political dialogue and freedom of expression. The media landscape is diverse and represents the real control mechanism for the ruling parties. However, we need to do more to ensure that journalists remain independent and are protected from the party-affiliated tycoons. Significant results have been achieved in the areas of fight against corruption and organized crime. The rule of law reforms need to be continued in line with the Venice Commission opinion and EU standards, and for the benefit of all Kosovo citizens. These reforms, including the judiciary and anti-corruption agency reinforcement, are crucial for the European reform agenda and Kosovo's advancement on EU accession path. Yet, the rule of law means equality for all. Therefore, I call the government of Kosovo to implement the constitutional court judgment regarding the Visokoi Dichani Monastery and demonstrate that it does not have a selective approach when it comes to the application of rule of law. An essential element on Kosovo's EU integration path is certainly the dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia, which conditions the EU membership of both countries. Let me emphasize once again that without a comprehensive legally binding agreement on the normalization of relations between Kosovo and Serbia, the accession uh, to the Union will not occur. Finding a way to accommodate it within Kosovo's constitutional framework will lead one big step closer to the end of the dialogue and finalization of this lengthy process with the mutual recognition. Furthermore, the environmental protection must become a priority for Kosovo. One of the main big steps on that pathway is the energy transition. It is high time to finally adopt and start implementing the long-awaited energy strategy, which will pave the way for decarbonization of Kosovo's energy mix and open the door for more renewables. We need to think in the longer perspective and realize that the cold not only kills the citizens, but will also kill the economy once the carbon adjustment mechanism enters into force. The citizens of Kosovo are well aware that they have a strong ally in the European Parliament, and me personally, as I have repeatedly reiterated, the need for immediate granting of visa liberalization, which is long overdue, despite the fact that Kosovo has met all the criteria. I wish to see the harvest of our joint efforts in the future, since Kosovo citizens deserve to live in the country that enjoys full international respect and a clear European integration perspective. Dear colleagues, I would like to thank you mainly for your very positive feedback on this report, but also for your continued support for Kosovo to advance on its reform and Euro integration path. Kosovo has made a significant progress in recent years in many areas, maturing as a democracy and as an international partner. The success of the Kurti government will be measured in delivering on key issues, judiciary, rule of law, energy transition, but also on education and health. And that is my main message for the Kosovo government. You have a stable majority and still a fresh mandate. Use this. Kosovo's international priority remains the Brussels-led dialogue with Serbia. The deals on energy in the north of Kosovo and on missing persons are important, as they will contribute to the further normalization of the situation and mutual trust between Albanians and Serbs. 
EU Special Envoy Miroslav Lajczak has our full support, and we wish to end this process soon, since there is a unique transatlantic alignment on this. My second message is for Kosovo's international partners. The last EU summit created a major disappointment for Kosovo, but also the whole Western Balkan region. I honestly hope that when delivering this speech, I would be congratulating Kosovo citizens on visa liberalization. Yet, not a single delivery was made to any of the countries of the region. Dear French and Dutch colleagues, citizens of Mexico, Nicaragua, and Qatar can travel freely to Europe, but still Kosovo's can't. I deeply regret that, as it sparks Euroscepticism and undermines our credibility in the eyes of our partners in Kosovo. We do need to do our homework here. I invite you all to convince your national governments to finally deliver what Kosovo deserved a long time ago, free movement for its citizens. Thank you so much.